Lesson 6.1, day one, how many children are in your family is the question. So I want you to count up the number of children in your family, including yourself. Uh, back at the beginning of the school year, I did ask you to do this, and I asked you to include all stepbrothers, stepsisters, half-brothers, half-sisters in that beginning of the year survey. So here were the probabilities out of 24 students who responded to the survey as to how many children there were in their family. So you can see that uh, the only children, there were five out of 24 students who were only children. There were six out of 24 who have one sibling and themselves. Seven out of 24 had three children in their family, so on and so forth, up to six. Originally, this just did say six plus, but no one did have any more than six in the survey, or at least they didn't respond that way. So is this a valid probability model and explain. So if I add 5 24 plus 6 24, so on and so forth, they do add up to be 1. So two things. Yes, the probabilities add up to 1. And each probability is between 0 and 1. So my next question is 5.6 or 5.7167 a possible value for x. So could there be a value between 5 and 6 here? And the answer is no. We can only use actual whole numbers describe a number of people. And the vocab that we use, the vocab word that we're going to use to describe this is that this is a discrete probability because it can only be one child in the family or two children or three children, so on and so forth. All right, so because I don't have a room down here to do number three, it's going to be on the next slide. So here is my histogram and you can see that I took the data from the previous page and just pasted it right here so that I could see it. And along the x-axis is going to be the number of children, that x variable. And then along the y-axis is going to be the probability. And I know that my biggest probability here is going to be that 7 out of 24. So I need to make sure that my y-axis goes up to 7 out of 24. I didn't feel like converting all of these to decimals. So I just labeled them all as fractions. And that's how I'm going to leave them. All right, so now I need to look at how many or what percent have one ch child. So that would be going up to five. And so it's going to be a bin around the one. So I want to try to make my bins as equal in width as possible. Obviously, as I freehand it here, it may not look the greatest. I'm actually going to redo that one to go about halfway. So then two would be six out of 24. Oh, that was real bad. And then three would be seven out of 24. Four is three out of 24. Five is one out of 24. And six is two out of 24. And so there is my histogram. So now I want to say in words, what does P of X greater than or equal to three mean? And find the probability that X is at least three. So um, probability of at least three children. So the probability of three or more children in a family. And then just like before, you need to show your work on these probability problems. 
you're going to do the 7 out of 24 plus 3 out of 24 plus 1 out of 24 plus 2 out of 24. So I'm just going to add the numerators up. So 7 and 3 is 10 plus 1 is 11 plus 2 is 13 out of 24. However, in words, what does this mean when there is no equal to symbol? This is the probability that a family has more than three only. Now this time we don't count the three up above. We're not going to count those 7 out of 24. So it's going to be 3 out of 24 1 out of 24 and 2 out of 24. So 6 out of 24. All right, so now let's talk about average of the x values. So if I were to simply find the average of the x values, that would just be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and divide it by those 6, and I'd get 3 and a half. Okay? So does this value tell us the average number of children and the families of students in this class. So when you look up here, would you say that the average is three and a half? Yes or no? Why or why not? So looking at our histogram, it's possible, um, it looks like our mean will be somewhere in the three range, but I don't think it'll be at three and a half. I think it'll be closer to three or maybe, you know, even smaller than three possibly because we have so many students who had one or two children in their family. Okay, so no. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to calculate what we call expected value. And so expected value is E of X. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply each value times the probability of that outcome. So 1 will be multiplied by 5 24ths and then add it to 2, which is going to be multiplied by the 6 24ths. 3 will be multiplied by 7 24ths. 4 will get multiplied by 3 24ths, and I am running out of room here, but I'm going to finish up anyway. 5 gets multiplied by 1 24th, and... 6 gets multiplied by 2 24ths. And then go ahead and use your calculator and get it. And so indeed, the mean is going to be a little bit lower here. It'll be 2.79. Now, keep in mind, of course, you cannot have 2.79 kids in a family. But so when we say like, you know, there are on average about two and a half kids per family, that doesn't mean you can actually have two and a half kids. It means that out of many, many families, the average number of kids is 2.79. Or in our 24 families, the average is 2.79. All right, good work. Let's move on. So now we're going to talk about the big, big ideas here today. So today we talked about discrete random variables. And discrete random variables will only take on a fixed set of possible values 
with gaps in between those values. So for our example with families, you could only have one or two or three or four, etc. children in the family. Then the continuous random variable is going to be able to take on any value in an interval, and that's what we'll spend um, the next day, the next video, we'll go over that particular circumstance. If you are asked to make a histogram of your random variables, you are going to have the values on the x-axis and the probabilities go on the y-axis. And then finally, on your formula sheet, the mean or expected value, these are interchangeable. Um, what you do is you take the sum of each value times its probability, and then you add them all up, which is exactly what we did down here below. We did the value times the probability plus the value times the probability, so on and so forth. So that is the formal formula for this situation if you have a discrete random variable again.